guys, welcome to Fine Scale Modeler Weekly. This week we're going to start off with Airfix's 135th scale K2Y ambulance. This heavy ambulance served the British Army throughout World War II and could carry up to 10 sitting or 4 stretcher borne casualties. The frame, assembled from side rails and cross members, gets front and rear leaf springs, rear axle and drive shaft, front suspension, and three part plastic wheels and tires. No engine is included, but the lower section of the sump and transmission are given. The body comprises floor, sides, roof for the box and cab, rear doors, front fenders, radiator grill, hood, and cowl. The body wraps separate interior walls with benches and stretchers in the back and ceilings there and in the cab. The driver section features seats, dash, and controls. The rear steps can be posed folded or deployed. Clear parts provide the windshield, window on the door between the cab and compartment, and headlight lenses. A small photo etched metal fret supplies trim for the roof fence and the placard on the driver's side fender. Decals supply plenty of red crosses and markings for four British ambulances, a 30 core vehicle in Northwest Europe in 1944, one in contra camo in North Africa in 1940, an overall sand-colored ambulance in Egypt in 1942, and an overall green territorial service vehicle in England in 1944. More than 13,000 of these sturdy trucks were built, and they served in World War II, Korea, and elsewhere, so this should make a nice addition to the Airfix catalog. Indeed. We looked at Armas 172nd scale Sea Hurricane in a previous new product rundown. You can find that in the description. Now we have the latest version, the Mark IId, a specialized anti-armor aircraft armed with 40 millimeter cannons under the wings. Armas Hurricane Mark II kits are slightly different than the Mark I's, with the floor molded into the upper wing, but they are characterized by beautiful surface detail, good interiors and gear bays, and optional canopies to pose it open or closed, along with pre-cut masks. The gun pods for the wings are provided as 3D printed parts. The same set of parts provides optional exhausts and templates to scribe new panel lines on top of the wings. TechMod decals give markings for five Royal Air Force Hurricanes, a number six squadron fighter in Egypt in 1942, one from number 20 squadron in Burma in 1944, a number 184 squadron bird in England in 1943, another number six squadron plane in Tunisia in April 1943, and a second number 20 squadron fighter in Burma in spring 1945. So this looks like another nice addition to Arma's stable of hurricanes. Do you keep hurricanes in stables? It seems I'd, like a strange place to keep them. Yeah, I don't think so. No. That would be quite the feat. Yes. Next, from MPC, a kit that has apparently not been reissued since 1980, the 125th scale Sodbuster Chevy 4x4 pickup. This thing epitomizes the automotive aesthetic of the late 1970s with bold graphics and even a CB antenna. The cab and step side bed are each mostly single parts with a separate hood and tailgate. Those parts fit onto the frame with spare tires molded in place, which also gets the front and rear leaf springs with live axles, exhaust, and drive shafts. They attach to the transfer case and in turn to the nicely detailed V8 motor with separate heads, optional exhausts, hoses, air cleaner, and more. A firewall and radiator finish the engine compartment. In the cab are a pair of seats, center console, dash, and controls. You can add a roll bar to the bed and a swinging mount for the spare wheel and jerry can to the tailgate. Clear plastic supplies the windshield and back glass and head and tail light. Chrome plated plastic provides bumpers, front grille, CB antenna, mirrors and spotlights. Nicely molded Formula Desert Dog PCV tires ground the truck. Sharp decals give the classic sodbuster graphics, gauges for the dash, badging, side markers and license plates from New Mexico, Michigan, Louisiana, Arizona, and Georgia. This MPC reissue just looks like a fun build of a colorful subject. From ICM, we have a couple of 135th scale figure sets. Let's start with a particularly topical subject from the company's Armed Forces of Ukraine series, the crew of Stugna P anti-tank complex. This Ukrainian design missile system has been deployed against Russian armor since the invasion. The launch tube is in halves, and it sits on a tripod with sighting equipment. The separate control box is here too, along with several AK-74 rifles. Four soldiers are included, two working on the launcher, another operating the control box while the fourth keeps watch. The other set shares the theme of crew service weapons, this time a German 8cm Granat Warfare 34 mortar. 
The barrel comes in halves with a separate bipod and base plate. Three ammo boxes are included and at least one can be posed open with the mortar rounds exposed. Four soldiers are included, one with binoculars looking downrange, one running carrying ammunition, and two kneeling by the mortar. These sharply made sets are ready for a diorama or vignette. You said diorama. I did. Finally, here are some titles from Osprey that caught our eye. Handy given the recent release of the Meng F-4G is Peter E. Davies' entry in the combat aircraft series F-4 Phantom II Wild Weasel Units. The 96-page softcover details the development of the Wild Weasel program to suppress enemy air defenses in Vietnam and the creation of the specialized F-4G Phantom for that role. Color profiles support the text and photos. In the dual series, Edward M. Young looks at the K6K Mavis and the H8K Emily versus the PB4Y1 Liberator and PB4Y2 Privateer in the Pacific. The 80-page softcover compares the Japanese flying boats and American patrol aircraft, including illustrations and photos, and follows with a discussion of their encounters. From the Air Campaign series, here's Afghanistan, 1979-88. In the 96-page softcover, Mark Galliotti examines the role Soviet fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters played in the Soviet war and the Mujahideen's attempts to nullify this air superiority. Lastly, in Book 315 of the New Vanguard series, Stephen J. Zaloga looks at the Russian S-300 and S-400 missile systems. The 48-page book looks at the development and operation of these air defense systems with photos and illustrations. All great references if you're working on related subjects. Look for reviews of the Austin and Sodbuster on finescale.com. It's a great place to hang out, checking out how-to stories and videos, cruising show galleries, reading hundreds of reviews, and more. You can also find kalmbachhobbystore.com, where you can see tools recommended and used by the Finescale Modeler staff. Finescale Modeler Weekly, brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard-to-find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Those of you who have been watching us for a while know that we have a scale model basics out there called dipping clear parts in pledge floor gloss. Now, pledge floor gloss has come under a number of different names over the years, right? I think it started as pledge future, pledge future with floor shine, pledge floor care, multi-surface finish. Anyway, the point is, is that what you know or may not know as pledge future is no more. SC Johnson is no longer making it. So if you're running out of future and you're looking for a gloss to use to protect your clear parts, what do you turn to? We've decided to go ahead and look at three other alternative products that may produce similar effects as what future used to. The Holloway House Quick Shine, Armstrong's Shine Keeper, and then Henry's floor polish. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dip some clear spoons in these and see what's what. So as you can see each of these is cloudy, has the consistency of skim milk, it's kind of watery, not at all what it looked like with Future or the, uh, the SC Johnson product that we've used in the past. So let's go ahead and dip these spoons. So I'm going to go ahead and dip this first one. Just dip it in, right back out. Wick off any excess. And then we'll just go ahead and let it sit there to dry. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing with number two. Wick off the excess. So each of these products say that they take about 20 minutes to half an hour to dry to the touch, and then it'll probably take just a little bit longer, maybe an hour, to fully cure. Just like Pledge. Floor gloss, floor care finish, multi-surface, the future stuff, you know what I'm saying. So comparing manufacturer safety data sheets and looking for ingredients, everything, I'm, they look similar, right? With big words that you can't pronounce. Um, but 
There are proprietary ingredients too. And one of the proprietary ingredients that Pledge Floor Gloss used to have was something mentioned as a self-leveling agent. The only one of these three products that talk about something similar is the Quick Shine. The other two products, the Shine Keeper and the Floor Polish, do not have a self-leveling agent. So this is the Quick Shine, and I've put a marker dot there so that you can see where it was untreated and then treated. So the, this end out here is treated, right? You saw it, dip it. And you can see that line, and it is, it's clear. It's coated fairly well. There's, you know, a little bit of, of bubbling or maybe a capture of dust in there, but not too, not too bad. I mean, I would say that that is similar to Future or Pledge Floor Gloss. This is the Shine Keeper. Now you can see here that, to my estimation, there's there's some more bubbling, and that may be because of the uh, the lack of a self leveling agent. Uh, but it it does definitely coat, and it is clear. And here is the floor polish. Now as again, this took a little bit longer to cure, and it seems to give the roughest of the finishes of the three. Yeah, you can you can see where there's this sort of that that line right there. You see that line, that squiggly line? It's where a hair got captured. One of the dangers of using this kind of product is if dust or hair or something gets captured in it, it's going to leave it's going to leave a mark. So these are the three products that have come to our attention to replace Pledge Floor Gloss or aka Future. We haven't done much more than the dipping test. We haven't used them on models yet, uh, but we do know that there are modelers out there who have been using them. So if you're one of them, let us know what your experiences have been, good or bad. We really want to hear from you. So exciting news, we got some new tools. And you know, how much we like tools, modeling tools, right? And I think we got them right here. A couple of very big boxes that are gonna go into the FSM workshop, but you know how workshops can be. Yeah, and we've been using the ours pretty hard here lately on a bunch of projects, so it is, um, untidy might be underselling it a little. Yeah, so we, we, uh, we need a dedicated space for these, and we're not gonna tell you what they are yet. We need a dedicated space for these, and. Let's go clean up the workshop. Let's do it. Is it empty? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of separated out.
So, we got cleared, space for them. We cleared some space. space. Yep. What do you guys think these things are? I mean, it doesn't take much of an educated guess to figure out what these are. But, you know what? I don't think we're going to show them to you today. No. We're going to save that joy for next, for next week. week. We'll see you then. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> Do it. Da -da. It is to me. If you've been paying attention, survive. So, uh. <laughs> I was looking down. Yeah, I know. So, I understand we got some. Fixing my hair. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> Do that again. So. We looked at Armin's 172nd scale seater <laughs> in a previous product friend. You can see that in the link in the description. Now you sound like that commercial where it's like the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> Fine scale modeler after dark. <laughs> really? <laughs> you, you beat eggs with it? <laughs> you skip?